All right, today we're going to hook up the a relay and some LEDs to the GPIO and control it via Modbus using Pi Modbus. Um, I'll show you. I'll be. I'll wire this up and show you how I do it. First, I have some blue LEDs, some resistors. This is ULN twenty eight oh three APG, which is a syncing um, eight port driver which will take a 5 volt input and sync it, which is what we need for this. So the first pin on this bottom right is the 3.3, and then we're going to, the second two are the I2C, I squared C pins. We could use that one. Let's see what the chart says. But they're, they're gonna turn the LEDs on kind of a little dim at first until we set up the pins in the program. So I think we'll start with nine for arc round because we need a, have a common ground, these three, and well, we can use four, five, six, seven. So we'll use those three and those three for the LEDs, and then we'll use the bottom, bottom two over here for the relays. All right, now to wire up this and those two GPI opens to that. Just so you can see the pin out ground, input, input, voltage. That that's a, the common voltage we're going to be syncing, though. The voltage is for the coils. It's a 5 volt coil relay. Okay, let's get started. Um, this is my Pi Modbus tutorial folder that I upload to GitHub, so I'm going to create a new Python library. I'm using PyCharm as my IDE. Let's call this Pi GPIO Modbus PCP Slave. We don't care about that as far as uploading to my Git. Okay, I'm going to download the example for the callback server. This is the example I used in my temperature sensor. I'm just going to copy because we're going to use most of it. Paste. Nope. All right. Do some cleanup. I'm not going to use any of this. We'll use the GPIO map. We'll just call it GPIO read device. I never really care for the identify. I'm not going to use a separate thread. Put that down there. We won't have an input of whatever, whatever file or path. And what I'm basically going to do is LED two and on. I'll show you how I do that. Okay. First, we'll do logging just in case. Import Python libraries we need. Good idea. So from GPIO 0, import LED. Now, since I'm on my Mac right now, because it has a better screen recorder, it's not going to know what these are. But I'm going to SSH. into my Pi. That's the address. There. Okay, that way we can run our program. We won't debug much. We'll be able to run it and get rid of that queue. Take that out. All right, normally they set a queue uh, on a separate callback process for this example, callback data block, when they do a set value. We're going to do it a little different. First, uh, I'm going to show you our device map. Let's do the first LED. We're going to create the LED also. If you look at my pinout, that's the first one. And then pin 3, pin 4, pin 17, pin 27, pin 22. And 
those are our devices. Found a good old. All right, we're gonna. So when you let me explain real quick. When you see this little icon here, that um, means we're overwriting one of the default methods for a Modbus set, Modbus sparse data block. So we can click it and we can see what it actually is. Um, we don't. We're not going to be using any of the self dot values because we're going to be the get values is not going to be used in the default method anyway. Um, but when we want to write to an LED, if you don't know, know much about the GPIO zero, we're going to. So here's a, here's a quick. I'm going to just type in an example real quick of GPIO4 equals LED4 GPIO4 dot value is going to be a 1 or a 0. If you were to set that to 1, it would turn the LED on. If you were to set it to 0, it would turn the LED off. This is kind of like it's got a property listener on the value that will change the value to whatever we set it of that GPIO. Also, this will turn it on and this will turn it off, calling those two methods. Just a quick example, just if you didn't know about GPIO0, it's a really helpful library. All right, so all we need to do here is get to our devices, grab the address. Up here we stored our devices using their, their default code. And we're just going to take the value and make it equal to value. And this is an array for some reason, and so we're going to grab the first one out of it. This set values is called for each address in the array. Actually, we're going to go down here also. And we're only really going to be using this for coils, so we're not going to have any holding reg registers or input registers or discrete inputs in this Modbus slave program. Now, values equals, this is the tricky part, self.devices, k.value for k in self.devices.keys. Now, self.devices.keys would just be our register number addresses. And then we're going to use that. This is a nice little iterator that will create an array of our values. So we want it to start at address and have it be our address plus the count. Because if we look here at the original code, it's very similar. In fact, it's pretty much the same. But they use a f in range. Then we just need to return values. OK. And that's it, I believe. Let's run this on the Pi. And it's running. All right, let's uh, let's connect up the camera. Record, okay. And let's quickly write a program and using IPython on the Max side. All right, first we need to import the Modbus client. I'm going to paste that in. Pi equals Modbus client 10 10 55 157. 20 pi dot not poo pi dot read coils starting at zero let's get seven of them or eight of them or zero to seven and we'll show the bits you see that in the camera nothing's on or showing nothing's on that's good let's write to the first read first led there we go second Sorry. Second, third, fourth, fifth. I think I heard a relay. Yep. I meant fourth, <laughs> as in fifth. Uh, well, I guess we'll go to six, which is the other relay. Looks like our relays are swapped backwards. That's fine. And that the last LED didn't go on. And there's some shorts in here. It looks like we have some resistors that are a little weird. Let's check that out. Why? Okay, I don't see a GPIO 22 in here at all, which means we forgot something. 27, then 22. All right, so that is the quick example on writing to the GPIO directly using Modbus. Map it out, control your own data block. Um, if you have any other questions on what you would like me to control or not control, let me know.